In this video, we are starting 6.8 regulation of the gene expression and the leg operon. Um, this is all about the regulation of the gene expression. We know that if you want to express a protein, if you, if you want to express a gene in terms of protein, so there can be several steps in between them. And you can regulate this process onto either of the steps. The process that you are looking at onto your screen right now belongs to eukaryotes. As you can see that you have got a well-defined membrane, a nuclear membrane, and that's why these are eukaryotes and there are far more steps that can happen into the eukaryote gene regulation steps. Some of the steps that are being written right here, that either it can happen onto the transcription level, uh, as you can see right here that this thing, there's a cartoonish diagram that here you can regulate it by the virtue of different kinds of um, proteins and uh, which are also known as the just as we saw if you remember that we saw the sigma factor that was there into the regulation of the replication that we can have uh, some of the regu regulatory factors into the transcription as well processing level that if it, it, this yellow cartoon is able to is trying to splice the dna as you can regulate it right here um, transport of the mrna if you uh, you are not allowing the mrna to go out of the nucleus so it cannot translate there because the ribosome actually exist into the cytosol and onto the translation level onto the ribosome itself that we know that some of the um, antibiotics such as spiromycin that can regulate the process of translation uh, onto the level of ribosomes is the concept of operon so we have already seen that how is it going to regulate into the eukaryotes but uh, the one thing that we have to do in detail is the prokaryote one and that uh, deals with the operon so what is the concept of so what is the concept of an operon so let us say there is a process of glycolysis. We know glycolysis is the process by which we primarily um, degrade the glucose into the pyruvate and into this particular process we acquire two ATPs. So this is the basic process. And into this, but this basic process is uh, comprises of 10 equal steps. These 10 steps require 10 different enzymes. Okay, so now let us say this is the let us say this is the process of glycolysis from the glucose we are trying to make the pyruvate and into this particular process we require 5 enzymes. Now can there be a condition that you require only enzyme number 1, 3 or 4? No, either you require all of them to carry, down, carry out the process or you want none of them. So this is the same idea that is being exploited by prokaryotes that, that if there is one metabolic process and into one metabolic process there are several enzymes that are acting into this uh, metabolic process then they are going to express all those enzymes or all those proteins in one go lacoperon pathway is actually consist of those enzymes that are helping so now let us try to see the metabolic pathway of the lacoperon that is happening into the bacteria if bacteria want to utilize lactose then what is going to do it first it has to express one particular protein that will act as the channel channel for the lactose so that all the lactose that is present into the environment that can come inside so there is number one protein which is permease okay so this first protein that it needs to express the next protein would be that obviously that lactose is a disaccharide you require to break it up so to break it up we have got two enzymes which is beta galactosidase and um, like trans acetylase so that is why either bacteria if the lactose is present into the environment either the bacteria wants to express all these proteins or none of them so what does it do it takes the all the genes and it um, uh, let it sit under the one promoter and one terminator that we saw into the um, into our previous videos where we discussed about the polycystronic genes so these are this is an example of the polycystronic gene and that is why it is known as the lac operon the operon operon is what is the condition that there are several genes the protein coding genes that are present under one promoter and one terminator and since this is specifically for the lactose metabolism this is the lactose operon let us try to find out like how this whole process is being regulated all the proteins that are being required by the bacteria for the lactose metabolism that are placed consecutively one after another so these are the genes like gene Y, gene Z, gene A. So they are coding for something. They are coding for, like, let's say that Z is coding for the beta, beta galactosidase. Uh, y is the permease from the, it will become the channel from where the lactose, the much higher amount of lactose is going to come inside the cell. And they, this is present under one promoter as you can see under one promoter and there has to be one terminator somewhere around here. So this will be the terminator. So one promoter and one terminator 
and in between them there are several proteins gene of the proteins one additional thing that you can see right here is the o and o stands for the operator okay so it is going to operate the situation it is going to operate the whole lag operon whether it is it will it be allowed to express or will it not now how is it going to do it you can consider it just as like a switch okay so now if a protein let us say this protein was a repressor okay now repressor is a very 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 general name let us say these are two proteins that are bound on to the dna now what can they do first let us say this is the protein which first goes on to the dna it binds over there and it helps it helps for the rna polymerase to recruit so if it is helping rna polymerase to recruit on to the dna after which the transcription process is going to happen this protein is known as activator and if nay it does not allow it to bind on to the dna then obviously it is repressing the sequence then this particular protein is known as repressor so as you can see that we have got a protein which is known as the repressor and this repressor protein can bind with a sequence and this particular sequence is known as the operator if this sequence if the pro protein is able to bind over there it is acting as the repressor because it does not allow rna polymerase to come onto the surface and it cannot bind and start the transcription of the gene this particular repressor itself is a protein so it must it must be getting translated or it must be getting synthesized by some other gene so this is some other gene that you please do not consider that this particular gene is just adjacent to the lac operon it can present somewhere else it is just to show you that there is a promoter there is a gene which is known as the i gene um, and i gene is going to make the repressor protein it can present somewhere else as well now what can happen let us say that if there is lactose present into the environment if there is some lactose obviously the bacteria will sense the lactose and it will start to synthesize all those enzymes that are required for the lactose metabolism now what can happen this lactose this lactose can bind to the repressor into this particular condition this lactose itself is acting as the inducer okay why is it acting as the inducer because ultimately lactose itself is inducing the expression of the it, uh, of the genes that are required for its metabolism so that is why in this condition it is known as the inducer now inducer can go and bind to this particular protein which is which was the repressor protein now if it is able to bind the repressor protein now repressor protein is unable to attach onto the operon now what can happen now easily easily rna polymerase can come and bind on to this promoter and it can start the synthesis of this lac mrna so this is how very simple process but very elegantly done into the prokaryotes number 1 number 1 point that please arrange all those protein that you require into one metabolic pathway under one promoter and one terminator this will be uh, this will be the genes lay gene a gene b gene c gene d so do it do all the enzymes that are that belongs to one particular metabolic pathway let them let them come under one promoter and one terminator now uh, this will make the process much more efficient so this is the brief introduction for the lac operon and uh, so as you can see that this repressor is binding on to the on to the operator okay so it what is it doing is it promoting it or is it suppressing it obviously it is suppressing it it is a repressor so if it is repressing it then it then it means that it is a negative regulation